Weekend is here with some fantastic things happening in the world of sports. Uh, good morning and welcome to In The Game, the program that brings to you uh, everything happening in the world of sports, from tennis to Formula One to basketball to boxing. You can name it all along. And of course, uh, we will be having a swell time today on the show. I am favor it to uh, And of course, uh, you can follow the conversation via our social media handles. Uh, go straight, of course, to X. Uh, you get to see and watch the program. Also contribute uh, to the program. Not forgetting also uh, Instagram amongst uh, others. We'll start with our top five stories making headlines in the world of sports at the moment and straight on to athletics where Kenyan athlete Kennedy Kiprop Cheboro has been slapped with a two-year ban by the Athletics Integrity Unit. Earlier this year, a 33-year-old was provisionally suspended for whereabouts failures and after enough investigation, the athlete was, uh, of course, has now been banned for two years. As per the AIU, all the results from December 27th have been disqualified after he missed three tests in the 12-month period beginning on November 6, 2023. He first missed the test and failed a failure on November 6 last year. Not a good one again for yet another Kenya athlete. And don't forget, Kenya has been in the news, especially in athletics, for the wrong reasons most of the times, especially when you talk about uh, the issues of doping. Don't forget, the Athletics Integrity Unit has placed Kenya as a priority A, that means that uh, any time an athletics event is going on, KI is among the nations that you know, faces a potential risk of uh, doping. And they are always uh, monitored closely by the Athletics Integrity Unit. Away from there now to the world of football, the Confederation of African Football CAF has urged the Nigerian Football Federation and other 53-member associations to put a stamp on player trafficking. Africa's APES body took a massive step towards the fight and combating of player trafficking after the governing body of African football collaborated with Vision 89 to conduct safeguarding and anti-player trafficking workshops with all its 54 member associations and Zola unions. In collaboration with Vision 89, an internationally recognized research, education and advocacy organization that fights the exploitation of young athletes through social and economic transformation programs, CAF member associations were taking, taking through key preventive measures for fighting player trafficking in Africa. Indeed, a conversation that is important at this time when it comes to the world of football in Africa. And the good thing is, CAF is educating different African bodies on what to do and to exploit, to stop, you know, exploitation, you know, player trafficking. We get to see players being lured into different leagues in Africa or Europe. In the case of uh, you get to play ball, at the end of the day, they are found doing something else other than what they were meant to do. Away from there now to our next top story, this time around athletics, where Athletics South Africa has named Michael Babadi as head coach of the Federation Olympic Games Marathon team. With consecutive wins of the Eastern Cape Athletics Coach of the Year Award, Babadi brings a wealth of experience to his oversight of the six athlete marathon team scheduled for the upcoming games in July August. Last year, he coached the marathon team at the World Senior Championships in Budapest, Hungary, and marked his first opportunity to coach a team at a major world event, a responsibility he embraces with profound humility. Interesting one for Babadi, a man who, of course, has been named as the head coach of the marathon team for South Africa as they look forward to break records, as they look forward to come out in the podium. But we all know that when it comes to marathon, Yes, South Africa may not be one of the strong houses when it comes to marathon in the world of athletics, but we know, of course, Kenya, Ethiopia, and the East African countries, they are very good when it comes to that. Not also forgetting the European countries, maybe if Russia is allowed to participate, which, of course, we know is not, they are not going to be allowed, and you also talk about them and some of the Asian athletes. But wait to see what happens and how much of, uh, you know, uh, skills and expertise that uh, Babadi will bring into the South African team. And now to our next top story, we'll talk Formula One, where Max Verstappen led a Red Bull 1-2 in qualifying at the Japanese Grand Prix with McLaren's Lando Loris, best of the rest. Ferrari's Carlos Sainz was fought, his teammate Charles Leclerc. At the wrap-up sports update, we we'll go straight to the world of uh, NBA basketball, where the NBA has fined the Philadelphia 76ers $100,000 US dollars on Friday for violating the league's injury reporting rules after Joel Embiid's return to the court on Tuesday night. Embiid, who had been listed as out for Tuesday's game for 24 hours, 
was suddenly upgraded to questionable just before 76ers coach Nick Nurse spoke around 5.45 p.m. before the home game against the Oklahoma City Tigers. Embiid then was declared available and placed into the starting lineup at 7 p.m. A uh, sad one for uh, Philadelphia 76ers, 100k fine, and uh, this will not uh, go that well for them, especially with, uh, you know, having to get revenue or generate revenue instead of, you know, uh, ex expenses or expenditures and for Philadelphia 76ers. Maybe, of course, they will take stricter measures in the uh, next few weeks, but uh, that's not a good one from the club. Joel Embiid be amongst uh, uh, what has uh, resulted to this particular fight, but wait to see what happens in the next coming weeks. All right, that wraps it up on our top five stories. we go on a quick break, and when we come back, we have a lot for you in the world of sports. Welcome back. You're still watching in the game. And favor it were. And joining me now to talk sports and everything that has to do with the world of sports is uh, Baby Depo Popola joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to the studios. And of course, it's been a while having you here. Yeah, thank you so much, Alfibo. It's nice being here back again. You know, <laughs> I've just been busy on the field and it's good to be back once again. On the good end. to be back. Uh, talking all things, the NPFL, you're donning the Bayesha United jersey. And a lot of uh, things are not really coming out good from that particular club. Yeah. Uh, is there something we don't know? <laughs> are you going to revive the team? Oh, all right. You know, it is the game of football. And believe you me, with the one new win in their last game against Atlant, I feel, uh, you know, redemption is not far from them. You know, anything can happen. It is the game of football. But uh, I think uh, they just lost uh, their step in the last couple of games uh, prior to the last one, which they won against uh, Atlant FC. So I think uh, this game of football, definitely, they can actually rise again. It starts just past. <laughs> all right. Let's look at the fixtures for this uh, weekend, especially okay. today being Saturday. In the NPFL, we get to see two games today. And interestingly, biggest amongst uh, the fixtures, not because of the table or because of where they are, but of course, because of the pedigree of the club. Rebel Stars against Aqua United. Plateau United will take on Doma United. And that's uh, an interesting one that would happen today. Um, baby, uh, Popola, quickly tell us uh, your thoughts on these two games and what you think will play out, especially with Aqua United battling relegation. Rebel Stars hoping to go up on top of the table or, you know, give the chase to Rangers International. All right, I think at this point in time, Remo Stars really need uh, to up their game on the home front. Uh, they've not really been fantastic if you, you know, if you've seen their games on, uh, you know, on, on home soil, uh, but they've had the nails and the tenacity to go on to win in the ember minutes of the game, the dying minutes of the game. And that happened in their last uh, two, three games uh, at uh, the Kenner Stadium, uh, Remo Stars Stadium in Kenner. And believe you me, today's game against Aqua United, I believe it's going to be a very, very important one for them, which uh, three points is a must. Anything other than three points, I think, uh, would make the coach Daniel Ogmade they feel, uh, you know, the team didn't, you know, give the best at this point in time. One new, uh, two new, uh, two one, uh, three one, four two, even five or five four. As long as it is a win, I think that is what uh, the coach Daniel Ogmade they will be going for, uh, you know, in that one. Aqua United, no doubt, uh, you know, they are they are struggling at this point in time. It seems uh, they are they are yet to get themselves, even after a couple of wins as well. You know, brought in a coach fired the coach uh, and they are still struggling i think it's just beyond what's happening on the field of play for me for aqua united they can always get better no doubt but uh i see Ramos starts taking this one on home so they've been fantastic olam leko adams has always been the super sub uh for Ramos stars at home and i believe uh you know tomorrow uh to this evening would be you know definitely there will be no difference uh, i think they would just narrowly nick that one out and one new or two new in that one all right for aqua united they got a new coach um, yeah Baba Ganaru. A man who is uh, a, a veteran when it comes to coaching in the NPFL. Yeah. He lost his first game in charge as coach at home and he must win against Ramon Stars. Uh, I think it's a very, very tough task for Baba Ganaru to win against uh, Remo Stars. Uh, this current Remo Stars side, uh, you know, will be going all out to get uh, a, a very, very important win. They got an away draw in their last game, I think, in Gombe, if I'm very sure about that, uh, which is a very far away. And uh, on Umso, they want to uh, actually, you know, uh, complete the task by getting a massive three points. I do not forget that uh, they're about uh, uh, four to five points uh, away, uh, you know, against Strangers at this point in time, which is top in the league. And they still have a game in hand against uh, you know continental uh, boys are uh, talking about reverse united at this point so uh, a win for them will move them closer uh, to where they really want to be and I, I actually see that happening or oh, what's worse to get a draw in that one all right to get a draw and um, today on the show we're having a veteran when it comes to the NPFL yeah. a man who of course holds the highest goal scorer in the NPFL 
uh, very soon we'll be having him join us. But quickly, uh, Deco, looking at the MPFL this season, who has been your outstanding team? Ah, outstanding team. I think uh, for me, in the first, I'll break it into two aspects for me. I think in the first half of the season, uh, Duma United were very outstanding. Uh, but at this point in time, they are just uh, suffering from what is actually a natural cost, right? When you lose quality players, uh, you lose quality players. Uh, and, uh, you know, these players performed very well in the first half of the season. But, you know, clubs would say, okay, I think I love this player, I love this player. And at the end of the day, you begin to lose your stars. And I think that's what's happening with the team. Uh, but uh, overall, in the season, a few Rangers, have been, you know, very dominant, you know, coming in the what, last what could be working, years. What could be working for Rangers this season? I think it's not just on the field. I think off the field as well, they are settled, they are calm, they are collected, they are getting the fans back into the stadium. Uh, they are getting, I think almost everything is working for Rangers <laughs> at this point in time. Fantastic management, fantastic coaching crew, and, you know, bringing the right set of players, uh, you know, to supplement for those that are left in the off-season. I think that has really worked for them. Um, coach, uh, uh, what's his name again, is doing fantastic. Uh, coach Fidel is, is doing very, very well with the team at this point in time, and uh, it will take a very, very, very serious team the likes of Aimba, and probably Emma starts to know to upsurge them from the top. All right, uh, well said. And uh, we'll go on a quick break. And when we come back, a guest, one who is a veteran in the Nigeria Premier Football League, will be joining us to discuss more about the league in Nigeria. All right, welcome back. You're still watching in the game. And favor each other. We're talking everything about the Nigeria Premier Football League. And uh, what else, uh, when you look at the MPFL, you just know that there are some persons who have been custodians of the league, some persons who have really ensured that the league is taken to the height, you know, where it's ought to be. And uh, one of them who has also paid his uh, services to the MPFL, Eiba International, not forgetting also Aqua United, uh, the promise keepers, uh, one man who, of course, still holds the record of the highest goal scored by a player in a single season. We are being joined by Ufonudo, a player who, of course, has moved all the way to Bangladesh, talking about Bashundara Kings. He joins us this morning in Nigeria and evening right here in Bangladesh. Good evening and good morning to you right here in Nigeria, Ufonudo. Uh, good evening from here, and I think good morning from, from Nigeria too. I'm so delighted to join you guys. Thank you so much for having me. All right, uh, since you moved away from the NPFL, you've been having a series of uh, states in different parts of the world. You went to the United States of America, FC Tulsa, and uh, you've been going on and on to ensure that you keep uh, the football in, in your career on. Uh, what's been happening with you? What's been happening you know, to your uh, goal scoring, your career as a whole, as a player? Can you tell us what you've been up to in the last uh, one year? Uh, well, I am... I am I'm still here. I'm doing what I, I love to do. I'm doing what I know how to do best. Uh, I'm still scoring. Uh, so a few, few days ago, um, some statistics um, dropped in Bangladesh. Um, I noticed that I, I played about um, 52 games and scored about 32 games and made about 16 or 14 assists, meaning that I was involved in every goal scored in every game that I played. So I, I was like, ah, wow, this is fantastic. That means I still have it. So truly they say, that um, form is temporary and class is permanent. All right, let, let's look at the NPFL. Since you left the Nigeria Premier Football League, yeah. how would you say the league has fared? Do you think there's been some improvement since you left or you feel that the league is not where it's supposed to be? What's your thoughts on the NPFL since you left? Well, to be very honest, I think there have been a lot of improvements. You, you can see um, teams winning away from home. The last, the, 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 the last um, week game, I saw... Um, I think that was Bendel insurance. They, they lost in the first half, like three, three goals down. And, uh, you know, it's, it's never happened before. You know, teams, teams are going away and they're winning games. Officially, things are, are been fair for, um, for a period of time now. So I think there's been a lot of improvement. And also, I think the players also have stepped up their, the games. And they, 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 they're putting a lot of pressure on um, your home teams, especially when they go away from home. So it is really improved. So I think it's to to um, the LMC, the organizers of the league. All right, uh, let, let's now look at uh, the MPFL goal scorers uh, so far. It's going to come up on your screens uh, shortly. Uh, some of the players have scored this season. Uh, Chidioke Obama, 13 goals. Uh, Albert Hilary, 12 goals. Sikiru Alimi, 11 goals. Robert Mizo, who is no longer in the league, 10 goals. Mustafa, 8 goals. Now, we've played uh, over 20 matches this season in the MPFL with 13 goals as the highest goal scorer. You broke the record 
and still holds the record of 23 goals in the season. Looking at this stage of the season with 13 goals, do you think it's uh, something close to breaking your record this season or someone will do it anytime soon? Because it seems that record has been there since the 2013, if I'm not mistaken, 2013-2014 season. Well, well, for me, for me, I think what I really think doesn't matter. It depends on, on the individuals who are on the pre stage. Well, if if I want to say impossibility is nothing, if you believe and you work hard towards it, I think it can be achieved. So, twenty games have been played this year, have um, about 10, um, 16 games left, and to achieve fourteen goals to break the record is very, very possible. You had work, dedication, drive, consistency. I think you can do that. So. Um, for me, I really want that record to be broken, to be very honest. Just being so sincere because this record has been here for a very long time. I think this year, ending this year is going to make it like one decade after this record has been set. So I think it needs to be broken. So a new challenge can also be set, you know. We, I think we have the quality of players that can do this. But I think it's very possible. For me, I think I need this record to be broken. All right. Uh, my guest in the studio has a question for you. All right, uh, good All right. evening where you are basically at this point in time. So I would like to ask you, you know, uh, in the league where you are currently, you said you've played about 52 games. Um, what, what, what how has it been for you settling in the tactical changes? Um, how different is it from the NPFL? Well, I, I must say the NPFL is very rich. Probably we, the league organizers, the teams, we are not amassing the talents we have. The league... Nigerian Professional Football League is so rich. We have a lot of quality players. We just need to, you know, get a lot of infrastructure, get some good pay, and I think the league is something else. It will be something unimaginable. Okay. Yeah, uh, if, if I want to compare the, the, the talents we have here compared to the Nigerian Professional Football League, I think we have a lot of talent in Nigeria. I must really be honest. Um, well, I've been trying to settle in, you know, different system of play, different coaches, different players. It's really not been easy, and uh, most of the jobs that are being done here are done by the foreigners. You know, they believe that you're the one to, you know, to get up the team to wherever the team is going to be. If the team fails, it is you as a foreigner that has made the team to fail because you have limited numbers of foreigners that play in the league. So every team has the right to register six foreigners, and only four can play in every particular game. So you see that they use more of their local players because they want to, uh, they want to see their local players in true. So, well, I've been trying to settle in as much as I can. So I think I'm doing my third season. So, for me to do my third season, because it, let, let, let me just break it down. In, in this country, the, the, the contract they give you is okay. a season contract. Okay. So, if you don't do well, you're, you're back home. So, for me to have survived the first season, second season, and already on my third season, it shows that I've been doing something, something very good for myself and also for the teams I've been playing for. All right, uh, Alfred, before we let you go, let's quickly. Uh, look at uh, the MPFL table. Now, if you look at it, Rangers International are currently topping the table and, uh, you know, followed by AIBA International, Lobby Stars, Rebel Stars, Platoon United, Shooting Stars. You have played for AIBA International in the past, also made records with AIBA International. But Edugu Rangers tops the table. Do you think, who do you think, or who are you looking forward to uh, winning the league this season? And secondly, your former club, Aqua United, is currently battling relegation, which is something a lot of persons did not see coming. What's your take on that? Okay, first of all, let me go on the, the top of the table. For me, uh, I think um, the trophy this season is going to the Coast City. Uh, there have been tremendous changes in, in the Elevo Rangers team, the system of play, the, the, the coach system of play, the players, the, the management. I think um, they really need it. And I think who needs it more? Guess it. For me, I don't know. Anybody is also trying, but I know. Um, Elugu Rangers is not going to take it easy. For me, I endorsed Elugu Rangers. I, I, I've watched um, a couple of their games, and I think um, they, they're going to get the, the, the trophy this season. Uh, for Aqua United, uh, I don't know I don't know what to say. I feel, I feel so bad about what is going on the team. Uh, it's a normal thing. It's a setback. But I think uh, they can still get out of, of that position. If, if, if We still have a couple of games, so they can still get out of that position. They just need to do the right thing. All right, they just need to do the right thing. And uh, just a quick one, Super Eagles of Nigeria. Before the Nations Cup, there were talks about having MPFL players in the Super Eagles of Nigeria. An export of the MPFL was Stanley Wabali, who, of course, plays in South Africa, but he came out from the MPFL. We saw what he did at the just concluded Nations Cup. Do you think that's enough justice for us to have more league players in the Super Eagles of Nigeria? You were once invited to the national team also. Do you think that is enough reason? 
while he was the product of Nigerian professional football league, but he was not a player of the Nigerian professional league. I think it was only um, uh, uh, the goalkeeper um, that was uh, a product of Nigerian professional league. They don't, they don't believe in the Nigerian professional football league players. They don't believe in the, in the league. They don't believe in the league. You know, if you can believe in the league, of, um, the South African League, and you, you take a goalkeeper from the South African League to be a first choice of Nigerian professional football league, it shows that you don't believe in Nigerian league. Nigerian league players are also good. You, you, can, you can, I, 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 I bet if you take these players and put them on a high platform, they can perform. Just that they don't believe on the league. So for me, we we have played that, okay. and we, in, our, in our time we also tried. So I think they should encourage the Nigerian professional football players too in the in the Spy Ghost. That's All right. All right, uh, thank you very much. You followed all we called and you responded. We wanted to say thank you. I uh, wish you well in Bangladesh. Hopefully, one day you might think of coming to retire in the Nigeria Premier Football League, like some players do yeah. outside of the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> all right, and I also followed all the league's veteran, that's the NPFL. Highest goal scorer in the Nigeria Premier Football League in a season 23 goals, and no player before and now is yet, above. of course, has broken the record, but we hope to see it. You know, get shattered. Maybe this season, maybe next season. But I don't know. But not people. Or rather, uh, maybe, maybe Depo. Yeah. Just scored, <laughs> uh, do, do you think that will happen this season? 30 goals scored by Chidoke Obaba this season. Still far from 23 goals. Uh, definitely. Still very, very much far. But uh, with, the, with the form he is in, uh, you can't totally write him off. But I think it will take a lot of okay. work. Definitely a lot of work, and not just from him, but from the team okay. as well, to make it you know, very intentional to see, okay, um, probably the penalties, uh, uh, the set pieces, you know, these, these are the options. Uh, I feel you, can, you know, can make him get to that point, but no doubt he's a quality player and he can get there, but, you know, form, form they say, is temporary, but class is permanent. So anything All can right, happen. Right, uh, form is temporary, class is permanent. Let's go straight to the CAF Champions League. Two great games were played on Friday evening. Babel Lodi Sundowns against uh, Young Africans of Tanzania. He ended in the draw, extra time draw. But it was uh, the Babel Lodi Sundowns side that went on to the semi finals. Vlad penalties. He finished three goals to two at the best first stadium in South Africa. Don't forget, uh, uh, Rolani side. Uh, we're uh, looking forward to win that game on regular time. But the Tanzania's uh, uh, Yaga boys uh, were very, very uh, formidable and tough as they proved so strong you know, in that particular one. And uh, you can see the fans. Right there in South Africa, Pretoria, celebrated and chanted, uh, clapping for their fans uh, of what they've been able to do. I remember Luis Sanders have been consistent when it comes to the Champions League, and they're once again in the semi finals uh, of this one. And joining us this morning and afternoon in South Africa is uh, a senior journalist with SABC Sport, uh, talking about Bazola Bulefe. Uh, good afternoon or good morning to you. Welcome to it again. Hey, Favor, good to see you again, and thanks for inviting me to the show, and uh, uh, a good afternoon from South Africa to your viewers. All right, you were in the stadium where uh, Babylonian Sundowns triumphed over Young Africans. A difficult game, I must say, compared to what we always have with uh, Babylonian Sundowns. He ended in the draw, and he took penalties, which, of course, some people will say is a game of love. Uh, but what's your take and assessment of the game played right here in uh, South Africa? Yeah, I, I must say, I, I don't think Mamelodi Sundowns uh, played to their best. Um, I think uh, young Africans, you know, as their wayside, um, showed a lot more intent to try and win the game. And, you know, uh, maybe we must open the discussion about goal line technology uh, in the CAF Champions League, because from where I was sitting, and obviously being a, a touchline presenter for SABC Sport, I had the monitor in front of me sitting behind coach um, Miguel Gamondi of Young Africans, and the ball crossed the line, Faber. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you, but the ball crossed the line. I think Young Africans should have gone one nil ahead. And on the balance of play, I think they were better, especially in the second half, and, and uh, should have won the game. But, you know, uh, VAR decided not to go against the, the, the referee's uh, decision, and obviously it went to penalties. And we know with Ronwen Williams' history and uh, how he studies uh, penalty takers, uh, Mameludi Sundowns immediately were the favorites to go through. All right, let, let's talk about uh, the coach, Miguel Gabondi, coach of Young, uh, Young Africans. He did say something at the post-match press conference. He complained of uh, an opportunity that he felt his team should have had, courtesy VAR, but the referee failed to look at uh, the VAR, and he's not really happy. He felt cheated 
by the officiating at that particular point. Do you agree with his sentiment uh, towards that particular game? Yeah, of course. So obviously, he, he's a coach that's aggrieved. I think if it was the other way around, he would have uh, obviously celebrated that the decision uh, went in his favor. If it was coach Hulani Mukwena on the other side as uh, Mameludi Sundown's coach, he probably would have said the same thing. Um, I think maybe to say, you know, the the integrity of uh, South African or of, of the CAF Champions League rather uh, was you know sullied a little bit by those decisions maybe is taking it a bit too far uh, you know mistakes do happen they have happened and obviously African football is improving by in the introduction of VAR over the last couple of years as I said maybe now it's time to open up uh, the discussion around uh, a goal line technology but yes uh, you know, you, you can't fault the, the coach for his sentiments, for feeling the way that he, he did feel after the game. Obviously, the heat of the moment. I mean, that post-match press conference uh, took minutes only, it took place only 10 minutes after the game. So obviously, he was still quite emotional. And um, like I said to you earlier, in my opinion, the ball crossed the line. I think it should have been young Africans in the semi-final of the CAF Champions League. All right, then let's quickly take some SFs from both coaches, Bokwera and uh... Uh, uh, Bogadi uh, will be back uh, shortly. Good innings in uh, this year's uh, Champions League. I thought uh, they were worthy opponents and um, very resolute, so difficult to break down. <clears throat> well coached with some very, very good players. So commiserations um, and uh, maybe take this opportunity to wish them the best with uh, the remainder of the season. <clears throat> Let me also congratulate this team, Mamelodi Sundowns Football Club, for reaching the semi-finals. Uh, for for uh, this, what is it? The second time in a row now, which is very important. I think everybody was what happened here. Everybody. If there are somebody here in this uh, sal, he told me it's no goal. I can argue, I can watch in the, the TV. If somebody can explain me why the referee don't go to check himself, but he want to check if Lomalisa deserves a yellow card or, or red card. It's suspicious, at least. If we want to defend the, the credibility of the African football, starting for that, starting for that, my friends. Winning the game, no, no, no problem, but winning clear. All right, uh, Gabondi, not happy with the officiating, especially for that call. We just talked about it. But quickly, uh, Mamelodi Sundowns are due to play either the winner of uh, between Asek Mebosa or Esperanz. Uh, the route to the finals, quite still difficult. Asek Mebosa, a big day, big team when it, when it comes to football in Cote d'Ivoire. And for Esperanz, uh, they are not uh, a new name. They are a powerhouse also in North Africa. These teams will definitely pose a threat to Mamelodi Sundowns. No, absolutely, Favor. You know, when you get to this level of uh, this stage of the competition, uh, any any fixture is tough. We saw uh, Mamelodi Sundowns were favorites from the beginning when they drew younger for the quarterfinal stages, but they had a tough time in the away leg in, in Dar es Salaam. Uh, they had a tough time last night uh, in Pretoria for the second leg. Uh, and, you know, apart from obviously the VAR decision that went against uh, Miguel Gamondi's side, um, you know, Mamelodi Sundowns uh, were, in my opinion, uh, not at their very best, especially in that second half performance. If you look at, uh, you know, the, the teams that remain, Pedro facing TP Mazembe, uh, you have uh, Esperance, the Tunis, uh, taking on Asek Mimosa as well. Still very tough oppositions. It doesn't matter. Alakli obviously are through after beating another Tanzanian side in, in, in Simba. Um, and also there's a discussion around the 2025 FIFA Club World Cup. Uh, it's neck and neck between Esperance as well as uh, Mamelodi Sundowns. We know uh, Africa will have a lot more sports now. So there's, there's, it, it's all to fight for, but you can't, you can't call it really. You can't uh, put your head on the chopping block to decide who's okay. going to go all the way at this stage of the competition. It's very tough. All right, before, all right, before we let you go, quickly, let's talk about Alakli of uh, Egypt. Defending champion, straight to the semi-finals, stroll in the park uh, in that particular game against CBSC, and uh, they'll be looking forward uh, to the semi-finals. Your take on the, the game uh, between Alakli and CBSC? 
Yeah, as soon as uh, uh, the Egyptians won the away leg when they played in, in, in Tanzania, uh, I thought it would be a walk in the park when they play in Cairo. Uh, Simba are traditionally uh, uh, awful travelers. When they are on the road, uh, they are not so good. But if you look at their home record, that's where they usually uh, get points or they, they go through in terms of the later stages of the of, of these cup competitions, especially in Kef Inter clubs. Uh, but, you know, one would say maybe... Alakhli remain favourites, even though, as I said earlier, this competition at this stage of, of the tournament uh, is still very tough. It's, it's difficult to, to predict, but they are on good form right now. Um, and they, you know, everybody will be looking at them to, to probably continue to dominate African football. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bazola, for your quality time. And uh, interestingly, the ladies, Bayala Bayala, lost that game against Nigeria. But I just want to ask you a question. The stadium that Babylon Sodas played in yesterday will be the stadium that Nigeria Super Falcons will play on Tuesday. How much of hostility will the Super Falcons receive from the South Africans? We know fully well that the tickets have gone on sale even before now and uh, you know with all, all the things that happened right here. Yeah it will be difficult that you know you know unfortunately in South Africa we've got a terrible attendance record uh, especially given that games especially if they are midweek and they are in the evenings um so coach Desiree ellis hopes that south africans come show banyana banyana support to give uh, uh the super falcons some uh, hostility uh, but it's going to be difficult to fill up that stadium which is where mama lady sundowns played against young africans uh but yeah we didn't see the game last night because uh nigeria didn't give us the feed <laughs> All right, Bazola, are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah, you were making the thoughts. Please go on. Yes, I'm saying we still did not, we didn't see uh, the, the game between Banyana Banyana and the Super Falcons because Nigeria did not give us the feed. So we only saw the scoreline, but we, we, we don't know what really happened in that stadium. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, this, uh, not just in South Africa, even in Nigeria, we also complained. I struggled to watch the game. I was using, of course, we know how it went. So it was not uh, a case of just the South Africans complaining alone, but of course, uh, we apologize on your behalf and we hope that we can do better. But uh, these are some of the things we were able to get on your screens. You can see uh, some pictures from the game. Uh, but of course, your goalkeeper, Swat, was brilliant. It was fantastic on the evening. And um, well, still all to play for in South Africa, but we must also thank you. Uh, we'll wait to see what happens in the next few days. But thank you very much for your quality time and uh, congratulations to Babylon Sundowns for what they have been doing. Always a pleasure, Favor. See you next time. All right. Thank you very much. And that was, of course, Bazola talking about the CAF Champions League. I mean, uh, Popola, this is uh, interesting to see that the teams we know that would go far in the CAF Champions League, they are, they're not disappointed by Melody Saunders, Alakli of Egypt, in the semifinals. Uh, definitely. We've, we've looked at that. From the group stages, we already knew that uh, these teams definitely, uh, you know, have some um, uh, abnormalities, you know, uh, if you don't see Alali in the semi-final, then you know that there, there is an abnormality somewhere. Uh, the likes of Amamlodi um, Sundowns as well. The, you know, this team actually has, uh, you know, a lot invested upon them, you know, player-wise, coach-wise, and, you know, facilities as well. Uh, you expect them to come forward and actually play wonderful football. I saw the okay. game, Amamlodi um, Sundowns, uh, and I, I was disappointed as well, like, like uh, what uh, the South African journalists actually mentioned. It was uh, below expectations. I, we wanted to see more, wanted to see the South African pattern of play, the, the excitement, the dribbling, the skills, but it wasn't on display as usual. But uh, you know, it is the game of football. You have your okay. off, you have your off days, but um, when you win on your off days, like what happened uh, yesterday, you know, you have the goalkeeper to thank as well for the penalty save. And indeed, it was just uh, a one-off win for me. I think they, well, uh, they would accept that and right. look to do better in the semi-finals. Okay, let's go straight to the results uh, for the last night the CAF Champions League. It was Babylon Sundowns progressive by penalties, three goals to two. Alakli of Egypt defeated CBIC, two goals to nothing, and on aggregate, three goals to nothing. And later today, we're going to see Petro Atletico Club of Luanda against TP Bazel Bay and Asek Mibosa of Cote d'Ivoire will take on Esperance of uh, Tunisia. All right, uh, away from there now to women's football. Uh, talking about women's football, the Paris Olympic qualifiers, it was Zambia who were stunned at home to Morocco. Two goals to one in finish. On paper, Zambia were favorites to win that game, but it was, of course, Morocco progressing. What a goal! What a time to score! Goalkeeper 
completely caught off. She did not expect it. Taken and quickly taken by Grace Chanda. From the 99 possession, she cuts inside, she shoots. Well I would say she's not expensive for nothing. Kunda Nanji sways it with her legs. A beautiful Kayla taken just off the tips of El Rimich and there's nothing she could have done. Delved with the ball. But that was too good to be true and it does go in. The Copa Queens are now level at the Levy Monawasa Stadium. So oh, the goal has been disallowed. It does not stand and Morocco could give a sigh of relief, I would say. Well, talk about Lux, Lady Lux smiling on you. Cross comes. Kundananji, what is It's the show, but this time it does count. 1-1. One, one. Maybe we need to hold, hold back a bit. We show more does get the goal goalkeeper finally beaten beat for the second time so all right both late goals from morocco ensure they take the first leg advantage into rabat for the return leg zambia winning uh, losing two goals to one nigeria on the other hand got a one new win against uh, south africa for the nigerian side and they had to require a penalty from rashida tajibade to progress into that one quickly your thoughts on these two games now, for me, I will tell you that uh, definitely the Zambian team, I did uh, you know, what they could do best, but it wasn't just good enough. Uh, I, I felt really bad that you know, that stunning goal was cancelled uh, for, for the Zambian team. It was a beautiful goal. Uh, just, you know, they score you a stunner, you reply with another stunner. It was a fantastic game of football. By the end of the day, it was a 9 minute goal that actually you know, sealed their fate in that one. For the Super Falcons, a uh, fantastic game, no doubt, but it was a bit disjointed you know, on uh, Randy Wild Drums' return. Uh, we expected to see more uh, but believe you me uh, i think uh, Raj rashida tajibade has been stunning for the side deborah beyond no doubt doing her best and uh Nadozie in goal post was fantastic. She made a stunning save, uh, twenty, you know, uh, from from a shot from twenty yards out. Uh, and I think if that had gone in, would have, you know, uh, you know, the game would have been very, very tight, uh, you know, for the uh, Falcons. But at the end of the day, I uh, one it was enough to just go through to the, you know, but uh, we are not sure if it will be enough to go through to the next okay. round because on Tuesday, uh, we don't know what would happen, but we believe that the Super Falcons can go through as well. All right, uh, let's quickly hear from uh, the coach, uh, Coach Randy Waldrop. Tebi Gatlana, captain of South Africa, and Esther Okorokwa, player of Nigeria. We're a bit unfortunate not to have a two or three goal uh, victory tonight. Um, but uh, I thought the team played very well. I thought defensively, considering uh, we had some new players in the back, missing uh, Plumpter and, and uh, uh, Demayan, I, I think uh, the back forward stood very strong I, I can only remember i'll have to look at the stats but i only remember really two two good opportunities that they had um and so overall i thought we can control the game parts of the things we wanted to do offensively we did uh as i said in the last press, press conference we still have to finish these opportunities but you know now we're at this point where there's one match left and the bottom line is we just need to go get a result at this point i really think we're gonna go to paris so uh there's no for me to think we're gonna lose or so i'm really looking forward to paris because you can't really disregard south africa as well like they're a really good team and the fact that also just not being able to train together a lot often uh, could play uh, a big part. So, and then again, the weather, just like the, the Randy said. It's been always up against uh, Nigeria and South Africa, and I think it couldn't have been a better final to say uh, for the last championship uh, to qualify for the Olympics. We've been preparing uh, both teams, and there's still one, uh, one more leg. And I know that in the uh, Olympic qualifiers, there's no uh, we go rule. So right now it's 1-0 uh, uh, for Nigeria, and they still have to come to South Africa. All right, the Olympic qualifiers, there is no away goal rule. Uh, sadly, it's not just about Nigeria scoring the goal score one away and making it two goals. If it ends 1-1 one, one, or 1-0-1-0, one, zero, one, zero, <clears throat> it has to be a penalty shootout. Uh, let's quickly move straight down to uh, the Guardian Premier League. We had a game played on Friday. Licious FC won against Great Olympics, one goal to nothing. And later today, we'll get to see Accra Lions against Bofokwa Tano, Betcham United and Ashanti Kotoko SC. In the South Africa Premier League, it will be Chipa United, the club of Stanley Wabali, against Kaiser Chiefs. Richards Bay against Morocco Swallows. Orlando Pirates against Lamont View, Godi Daros, and that's the club of Willis Sada. Stella Bosch will take on Shekukude United. Super Sports United will be up against TS Galaxy. 
All right, the way from there to the Egyptian Premier League. A game was played on Friday. Priyamit SC played out a goalless draw against El Gesh. And uh, we'll get to see uh, uh, interesting games in the Morocco Cup. We, we, of course, saw results from there on Friday. OCK, uh, Rodriba played a 2-2 draw. Penalty was uh, OCK with the 5-3. And Udion, Twagra Sport, of course, uh, in that uh, particular one. So 2-2 added for Udion, Twagra lost all penalties. Straight to the Algeria League Ward. Uh, interesting fixtures. FCL Bayad lost to FC Magra, two goals to nothing. Asoclef lost to JSR, one goal to two. FC Alger, three goals to nothing against US Souf. Uh, US Briskra, one against uh, JS Kabil, one goal to nothing. And in the Premier League uh, Cup later today, it will be fantastic fixtures. In the, MPA, in, the, in the English Premier League, uh, Crystal Palace against Manchester City, Aston Villa against Brentford, Everton against Burnley, Fulham against Newcastle United, Lutetal against Bournemouth, Wolves against West Ham United, and Brighton against Arsenal. Meanwhile, Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta are talking tough ahead of the game today. It will depend if, if they play the way we are going to play. Yeah. So if we play good, it will be fresh. If we play not good, it will not be fresh. So Lex is nothing. It's not Lex. They have physical good, they, they are fit, is not a problem. It's, it's how the team play, make the players individually play good. The opposite is not. Yeah, I was always very pleased with the result, the performance, and, uh, and the fact that everybody responded in the way that we expected. And uh, when you make changes, obviously, um, there is this possibility because they haven't played that much, but I think the boys were really, really good. All right, uh, Mikel Ateta and uh, Josep Guardiola, quick one, uh, Popola, quick, uh, your take. Arsenal, Manchester City, chances today, Brighton, and uh, one of them plays Crystal Palace. All right, uh, for me, I think it's a straight win for Man City in that one against uh, Crystal Palace. Straight uh, win? <laughs> I think it's a straight win. What about Arsenal? Uh, Arsenal as well against Brighton. Uh, it might look tough, but Brighton have not been in, in the form of their in the lives in the last couple of games. Uh, they've really been so destabilized. Okay. For me, they've not been really convincing. So I think okay. Arsenal should nick that one as well. Uh, so for me, the, the title is between Man City, Liverpool, and Arsenal. All every, right. every, everyone says uh, Guadalajara shouldn't win uh, you know, uh, a four-peat of the EPL okay. title, too, but I think uh, anything can happen in still in this one. But I'm rooting for Arsenal as well. All right, let's see how it goes. Uh, by the way, Copa de Rey final later today, Athletic Club against uh, Bayoka. That's a big one, especially for uh, the Africans in the team. Ilaki Williams is also in that team, and we hope that he gets the sword. Straight to 3 R, we got the results from Friday. Salary Tada played on a 2 2 draw against Sassuolo, and uh, later today, we get to see AC Milan against Lecce. Roma against Lazio and Puli will take on Torino. In the world of uh, tennis, uh, it was uh, the trusted one for U.S. top seed Jessica Pegula, who saved four match points to eliminate two-time uh, Australian Open champion Victoria Zareka on Friday and advanced to the WTA Charleston Open semifinals. Good one for top seed Pegula. We hope to see what she does in the next coming tournament. All right, now straight to the NBA where we had uh, fixtures or uh, results from last night and early hours of today. Uh, Charlotte Hornets uh, won against Orlando Magic, 124 to 115 points. Indiana Pacers were better off Oklahoma City, 126 to 112 points. Port Andre Blazers were better off Washington Wizards. They finished 108 to 102 points. Boston Celtics won against Sacramento Kings with a point, 101 to 100 points. Chicago Bulls defeated New York Kings, 108 to 100 points. Miami Heat were better off Houston Rockets. 119 to 104 point. Memphis Grizzlies were better off uh, Detroit Pistons. 108 to 19 point. Toronto Raptors won against Milwaukee Bucks. 117 to 111 points. San Antonio Sports were better off New York Oli Pel New Orleans Pelicans. 117 to 111 points. Dallas Mavericks were better off Golden State Warriors. 108 to 106 points. And don't forget the early Clippers, uh, of course, uh, did the best uh, to defeat uh, Utah Jazz. 131 to 102 Point. Interesting world right there, the world of the NBA. Final was on the show, uh, Popola. All right, uh, for me, I, I would say let's keep on seeing the NPFL basically because uh, okay. it is ours to sell and a fantastic game that will be played this evening. Uh, Remo Stars against Aqua United is a game that you must see. That, that will be one of you know, our sellouts for All right, season. thank you very much for yeah. coming. And for Always me, favor each other, I will say thank you very much for watching. Do have a lovely weekend and have fun.